Hello, hello. It looks like we are live. So, hi, we already got some people in the room. So happy to see you. Opening up the chat right now. Guys, say hello. I always love to hear your voice. I love to see that you're there. I love to see Melanie. Melanie's here. Uh, we got Caroline. Yes, ladies, I am here. Uh, now, as usual, I always start this off asking, can you see me? Can you hear me? I want to make sure everything is working out for you. Okay. So uh, here's the thing that I understand now. Now, so we, I live in the country. I know the image is kind of crappy. Um, we cannot get high speed internet here. Everything we get comes in via satellite. So what I say comes at you about five to seconds after it leaves my lips and your response is going to take another five to seven seconds, which means whenever, hi Jean, which means whenever I ask you a question, I actually have to wait anywhere between 10 to 14 seconds to see your response, which kind of sucks. And I'm really, really looking into places where I can do this on high speed internet because I really want to be snap, snap, snap with you guys, ask you questions, get your responses right away. Um, so, oh, I'm super excited. I love, love, love seeing you guys show up. Ah, oh, like you just, you drive me crazy. You drive me crazy with your love. Honestly, you do. So ladies, let's see where you're from because I love seeing where in the world people are coming in from. It's so cool because I've had people in Mumbai. I've had people in the UK. I've had Texas. I've had Alberta. So it's really interesting to see where you ladies are plugging in from. And it's nice to see these familiar faces coming in over and over again. It's super fun. Um, nice to see this crowd grow. You know, we have people, we come and go, but it's, it's just this for me. Like, honestly, when I do my podcasts, and I've mentioned this before, my mouth is like watering because I am so hungry to deliver this content to you and to teach you what you need to know to get to where you want to be, which I'm modeling this for you right now. Where you want to be is where I am. And I have been with my husband for 14 years. And guys, it was not easy. It wasn't easy getting to him because I had to go through so many BS relationships because like so many of you, my, you know, my parental role models did the best they could with what they knew, but they didn't have the best parental role models. And then that created a conditioning that I brought into my relationships. And then my experience added additional, you know, crap shoots to my whole relationship experience. I've gone through so many things that so many of you have gone through, but I did finally find the right one. And somebody asked him a little while ago, how do you stay together for so long? And he said, you just don't leave. And for 14 years, we have stayed plugged into each other. Through 10 years of fighting, we stayed plugged into each other. And we have both taken our turn being the pillar of support in the relationship and keeping it up and propping it up through those tough times. And we have earned what we have today, which is four years of no fighting. Like when I say you can have a relationship with zero fighting, I'm not joking. You can have a relationship with zero fighting. Half the battle starts with choosing the right partner. And that is what I'm teaching you right now, today, is how to make sure on that first date, you're kind of cracking open who this person is because we have a tendency to overlook the good ones and get dazzled by the wrong ones. And this is what I want to teach you how to start avoiding. If you want the dazzly one, you want to be in girl mode. You want to be in selfish short-term thinking mode because if it's bright on the outside and dull on the inside, it doesn't matter because you just want some fun. So you want the guys who are like, you know what? I'm not looking for anything serious. I'm not looking to lean in. I don't want to give you my inner light. I just want to give you my outer junk and have some fun. But when you want something deep and intimate and lasting, those types of males are 
different from the dazzly ones. And we've been misinformed about what to look for when it comes to dating. We've been told, look for the spark. There has to be a spark. And ladies, you know, definitely for males, there has to be an initial spark because otherwise it's just not going to want to stick around. So really that does apply to them, all males, because again, you know, it's got to, it's got to move. So there's got to be a spark. But with us, we need to look beyond the spark. We need to look for character. We need to look for consistency and get to know who they are. And for us, the spark can take longer to develop and that turns into the slow burn. And here's the thing, when it comes to generous long-term thinkers, yes, they need that spark, but they're also thoughtful and slow and selective. And what I'm teaching you how to do with all of these lessons that I do is speak their language. So let's get started. I'm going to put up a slideshow because, you know, I love my slideshows. So let's start this up right now about making your first date comfortable. And just a little bit of an intro for some of my newbies, some of my new people. And guys, if you come in late and you want to catch up, you like you want to see what it was that I was saying because it sounded so interesting, there's going to be a replay. I will be sending you the link to that. So don't worry if you miss something, you can catch up and watch it later. But for those of you who don't know, I've written eight books, six of them on love, dating, and relationships. So anywhere from getting over breakup, making sure if you're going online, you're not getting caught up with the scammers. And then there's the vetting process. That's no more assholes, making sure you vet twice, once for mindset and then for compatibility, because it really sucks when you find somebody compatible who's not in the state of mind that you need them to be in. Then I walk you through getting through that first year, making sure you're setting the right foundation so that you can really start to have a very cohesive, solid relationship. And from there, if there's any baggage and you're fighting, then you could read my book, Fix That Shit, because that's going to help you unload the baggage that you brought into the relationship and teach him how to unload his. Listen, ladies, you know as well as I do, you cannot tell a man what to do, but you can lead by example. And that's what I show you in all of this. I teach you how to be the emotional leader in this relationship, starting from the moment you start talking. Now, my website canadasdatingcoach.com gets about 2,000 hits a day because there are so many questions on Google that when people ask a question, there I am on page one, if if not like number one. Uh, and then I love how these numbers keep changing every week. So over 17,000 views on YouTube, 3,100 downloads on iTunes, dozens of mainstream news mentions. I just had another one come up on Huffington Post thousands of books sold. I have been pushing this hard because I want this to get out there. I did a year-long book tour. Hundreds of women that I helped, either who've read my books and reached out and told me, or women who've come to me for coaching. And that is that I know of. Not everybody actually lets me know, I'm, I'm sure. Um, so here's what you're going to learn tonight. What you... What you're going to understand is how you set the tone for that first date. You're going to avoid the interview process. You're going to start that slow burn that I keep talking about because it's the slow burn that stays hot, not the spark. And you're going to stay cozy from beginning to end. Now, of course, oh, uh, that one cut out a little bit. If you don't mingle, you stay single. I know that when it comes to dating, some of you are feeling very discouraged. You're not enjoying this. Let's take a little poll right now. I want to know how you're feeling about dating, how you're feeling about those first dates. Uh, does it suck? Are you having a good time? Or are you new? Are you just getting out there and, you know, you, you're kind of dipping your toe in and you're leaning into these webinars because you want to understand how to do it right before you get out there. So where are you when it comes to dating? Oh, we got some, got some people having fun. Good. Okay. All right. So let's go back into the chat because I'm curious. What is it, Halifax, Nova Scotia, what is it that you ladies want to learn tonight? Like what is the burning question on your mind as we go through this, what is it 
that you really want to make sure that you're getting from this webinar tonight. Let me know what you need because I want to make sure, I always want to make sure you get what you need. I always want to make sure you're moving forward. I always want to make sure that you're feeling satisfied and, and you're evolving. And, you know, eventually you kind of, you walk out of this space that I create with you into something better. That is my goal is your evolution because your evolution is your happiness. And I'm telling you guys, I believe in karma and your happiness creates my happiness because I just feed off that stuff. So now we look at first dates, you know, the way that we look at them in our mind is, is we, you know, it would be ideal, right? If you meet that person and you click and it is just freaking amazing and you find that love of your life, you find that soulmate and we, we go, hopefully all of you are going into your first dates with that notion. You haven't given up that, that person, that soulmate is out there. Uh, so Caroline, they suck if you're meeting someone that carry a conversation. It's not so bad. Uh, right? <clears throat> I hear what you're saying, Caroline. So first dates can suck, but if somebody can have a great conversation, it's not so bad. Agree 100%. Jean says, I love to learn how to know a good man on date one. Absolutely. Good, good, good. Um, so what I'm finding, like our culture today, we have this quickie culture and online dating has kind of created this and I don't blame it because one thing that I said recently in an interview is our brains can only group with 100 people. After that, it splits itself and we always need to sustain this 100 people group and anything above that becomes too overwhelming for us. And we were talking about online dating versus meeting people face to face. And, and they were kind of talking about it like, oh, online dating sucks. And I said, you know, here's, here's what I understand about human nature and this, this capacity for 100 people. Online dating hasn't created a bigger world. It's actually kind of shrunk it down to something that feels more manageable. Because when we lived in smaller cultures, we had a better sense of each other. But now that we live in this society where there are so many people surrounding us all the time, I mean, what is the feeling you have if I say, you know, what do you think about going up to a stranger in a coffee shop and tapping him on the shoulder? My husband's in the room right now. Baby. <laughs> he won't say... He won't say hi. I know. I wish I could get him to come say hi to you guys because, oh, uh, just, hello. <laughs> He's the love of my life. Um, and so, you know, what do you feel? Like, like if I say, go out into a coffee shop, tap somebody on the shoulder and have a chit chat with them. What does that thought give you? What kind of feeling do you get when I say that? Is that scary at all? Does it make you feel nervous? Do you think you're capable of doing that? Give me something in the chat. Let me know what that incites inside of you. The idea of going up to a stranger and starting a conversation. Because the way that I view it, the way that I think about it, and I might be wrong based on the feedback that you guys give me, is it feels scarier now because now we're surrounded by so many more people and the idea of talking to a stranger that feels like they're outside of our comfort zone, which is that group of 100, feels really kind of freaky. It's, it's not only stepping outside of our box, but it's stepping outside of a subconscious box. And so being online kind of gives a sense of greater control and it feels in a way like there's less people because there are physically less bodies around us. And so we have the capacity to just kind of narrow in our focus and block out other things and feel like it's a smaller group, even though there's so many more people out there. So let me know your thoughts about that. I am super, super curious what you think about what I just said about online dating versus in-person dating. So what I see happening a lot now is 
a very quick dismissal of people. Like there's, we, we kind of conduct interviews when we do those face-to-face -face meetings. So you meet somebody online, they seem interesting, you have a little chit chat back and forth, and then you say, let's meet for coffee. And, and we like to do the coffees now instead of the dinner because so many of these first dates are failing. And so we'd rather, you know, not put somebody out at great expense just to, you know, say, no, thanks. I'm really just going to move on. And so we have like this, these set of questions that we ask and, and we interview them. It's like rapid fire with these questions and then seeing if they answer them correctly. And if not next on we go. And often this is kind of what happens in those coffee shop dates. And, and, you know, somebody mentioned earlier about how it can suck unless the conversation is great. But here's the thing that I want you to understand about the kind of men that I'm talking to you about. So of course, if he's going to be a dazzly kind of guy, if he's super outgoing, if he's just so interesting, if he says all the right things, then absolutely, that just makes it so easy, doesn't it? Because it's easy to fall for him. It's easy to fall for his charm. It's easy to fall for his charisma. It's easy to fall for his words. It's easy to say yes to that next date. But the kind of men who are the solid ones, who are going to be the devoted ones. They have certain characteristics about them. And one of them is selectivity. And they're selective with their energy. Because here's the thing, they are very sacrificing and very hardworking. And that takes a lot out of them. Because they're going to be responsible for the people that they love. Now, if they have an ex and they have children with that ex, then they feel responsible to her well-being as well as the kid's well-being. And so they're paying alimony, they're paying child support, they're paying above and beyond because they understand in a very subconscious fundamental nature that the happiness of the children relies on the happiness of the mother. And good men are, they work long hours because they have this super strong work ethic because they want to ensure not only that their children and the mother of their children are supported now, but they're thinking about when they die and having enough to leave for their kids so that their kids are always comfortable, always cared for, always have something to fall back on. And so their work ethic is super, super strong. And that takes a lot of energy out of them. Their friend circle is very small because they understand that human connection to them because they are such deep, devoted people that when they create a connection, it takes a lot from them because they devote a lot of themselves to that connection. And so a good man initially may very well seem quiet, introverted, maybe even shy, but these are the ones that you want to make the most comfortable because potentially these are the ones that are going to make you the happiest down the road. And this is why I called tonight's show how to make your first date comfortable, not how to make it amazing, not how to make it incredible. You want to make it comfortable because you want to give him an opportunity to start opening up. Now, these men have so many layers. And I have friends who have known my husband for 10 years. For 10 years, at least once a year, they've come in contact with my husband at social gatherings. And after 10 years, do you know what they start saying to me? I never knew he was so funny. After 10 years, and do you know why it takes that long? Because they're observant. Good men are very observant. They're not going to just dish themselves out, right? So guys are selfish short-term thinkers who are trying to get the booty, who want to dazzle you with what they say and, and their charm and their outgoingness, right? They want to pull, guys want to pull you in, whoever you are, because they just want to win at the game of having sex, because that's what they're in it for. They just want to have fun. And again, I do not demonize that. 
Women can be in girl mode too. I have been in girl mode. I've had tons of fun. I did it for a year straight. And then other times in between when I felt like I just wanted to go and be with people, maybe explore myself sexually, but I didn't want to commit to anything. And so there's nothing wrong with anybody being in guy mode, but when you want a relationship, you are in woman mode because you're looking for somebody to take care of, to be generous with, to lean into for the long term. And you're looking for somebody like-minded, but the person you want to be with is somebody who is selective because this is where you gain your sense of security. This is where you can look at him and say, I do not doubt you for a moment. This is where you feel supported and, and his attention isn't distracted all over the place because he's trying to draw in people. That's another great quality about these men is they're so confident that they don't need the attention of a lot of people. So again, that focus for them, you know, their inner light is kept really close because they want to make sure that when they start dishing it out, it's going to be towards the right direction. And they're looking for women who are like-minded, which means they're looking for women who themselves are selective, who themselves aren't flashing everything everywhere in an attempt to gather in. You know the word trolling? There's guys who are trolling for sex, and the word trolling comes from fishing, and it's when they drop this humongous net and they just scrape along, and it doesn't matter what they catch. It's about quantity, not quality. And, and so when it comes to men, it's about quality, not quantity. And they're looking for women who have that same mindset. And so again, this first date, if you make them comfortable, you start seeing past this wall that they have, this self-protection of their energy, and they start showing little bits of themselves. And if you're speaking their language, if you're behaving in ways that they recognize because it's like them, then those openings start becoming more and more and they start really showing you who they are and that's what I want to get started on this first date is for them to start showing you who they are because they recognize a like mind and they like that and they want to lean in and get that second date so let's go back to our slideshow now how would you have this first date in a way that makes it comfortable. You want to get walking, okay? You want to get walking. I'm going to take a look in the comments here for a second because uh, we got we got some, I can never approach a stranger in regards and trying to meet or date, right? Uh, and someone else can never make that first contact and then I always assume everyone is in a relationship, would never put myself in a position of getting into the middle of that this is a very interesting comment because here's the thing. There are good men in that same room assuming the exact same thing. I guarantee, ladies, they are looking at you saying, there's no way she's in a relationship. I'm not going to approach her. And it is up to you to let those men know that the door is open. So ladies, look for a ring. And if there's no ring then start this flirting process. Um, Deborah says, I got off an elevator in my apartment, made eye contact to a very handsome man. This eye contact stuck a bit. Yes, eye contact for one, two, three. Mm, that's when they start feeling the vibe. Your energy can transfer across a room through eye contact. Have you ever made eye contact with somebody from across a room and just felt it just chill you right down to your toes? Just this little thrill going on inside of you? If you hold that gaze, there's a transference of energy, which is so cool. Uh, I look back and he was still looking at me. That bugged me that I didn't know what to do, but guess what? I seen him again the next day. He got on the elevator with me along with his wife and her girlfriend. <laughs> you never know you never know but here's the thing it doesn't hurt to go up to somebody have a small conversation and then go oh I have to go but here's my contact I'd love to continue this conversation over coffee sometime and he should let you know that he's with somebody 
or if he's with somebody and he was just taking your information and ladies I do say you can you can open an email account that is specifically for these kinds of transactions you know just because you never know who you're talking to really yeah I mean everybody's met somebody who initially they thought was great who turned out to be not so nice so create a new email address for going up to people having a short conversation I call it the hit and run flirting technique and then looking at your watch and going I have to go I have to get to this next meeting here's my information love to have a coffee with you sometime let me know when's a good time and off you go and if he's in a relationship he should not be reaching out to you now there are guys who are in relationships who are cheaters who are still looking for the next thing this is why I use my no kissing for three months rule because this vets them out this gets them out of the equation somebody who's looking to satisfy his penis and not his mind and not his heart does not wait three months usually for somebody because for them it's about you know again it's the quantity not the quality they're not looking for a relationship they're just looking for fun and so who you are what your goals are what you need really doesn't matter in these kinds of transactions so getting back to having that first date making it comfortable it's very typical for us nowadays to suggest a coffee date he might suggest a dinner date I suggest you go on a walking date because there's only one question you want to answer on this date and that is do I want to see them again that's it that is all you need to know do I want to see them again that is the one question you want to answer not is this husband material right you don't know that yet you don't know and again he may seem fantastic and amazing and you might feel over the moon on that first date but use the no kissing for three months rule because first impressions can be fantastic but they may be false and somebody cannot keep up a facade for three months if over the course of three months he's not seeing you enough to break the facade like if you're only seeing him once every two, three, once a month, you know, two, three weeks, once a month, you're not seeing him enough to really ascertain if the words that he's saying about who he is and the life he lives are matching with reality. And this is not somebody you should be choosing. I want you to think about the kind of relationship that you want. Do you want to be in a relationship where you see somebody every few weeks? If that's not what you want to get into, that is not what should happen during those first three months. So using the no kissing for three months rule vets the people who are not being honest. This is such a fantastic rule for making sure that you don't waste any time. You want to use this rule to make sure that you don't end up in a relationship with somebody that you realize you're not compatible with, bouncing out of the relationship eventually and sometimes far too long after you got in like six months a year two years five years you don't want to do that anymore you don't want to waste any more time so using the snow kissing for three months rule means even if he was great in the beginning if he cannot keep up that greatness if he's going to fade off if you're going to realize that the condo he said he lived in by himself is actually also occupied by a girlfriend or his mother <laughs> The facade will fall apart before three months is up if you're seeing him enough. And I want you to make sure you're finding out the truth before you give up your heart, long before you give up your heart. Now, why do you have this walking date? Why do you get away from the dinner date, away from the coffee date, away from the interview? Because people can be more at ease when they're not directly facing each other. So I call it the interview date because that's how interviews are conducted, right? When you go to an interview, you're sitting square off face to face with each other. And it's, I mean, think about the last interview you had. Didn't you feel a little bit nervous? Didn't you feel a little bit on edge? Deborah says, I like a walking date. Fantastic girlfriend. My last date, we went to Cambridge Fair, watched a concert, walked around, shared fries. That is amazing. I love that. That is perfect. Ladies, does, the, does that not sound like a great 
date. And on this type of date, if somebody is trying to think of the next thing to say, or if somebody, like, you know, you want to ask some kind of deep questions. You want to start figuring out who this person is, right? Like, it, it has to be more than what kind of job are you working at? Do you own your own home? Do you have kids? Like, you want to get deeper than that, don't you? Like, you want to find out what is inside who they are. And you want to ask the kind of questions that make them think. And that's where No More Assholes comes in, which is the book I wrote that walks you through the two-step vetting process and also using the No Kissing for Three Months rule to get you to the finish line, which is finding a fantastic partner. So you want to ask the kind of questions that makes them ponder. And nobody wants to sit across from somebody while they go inside their head trying to find those answers that are rooted deep inside of them because they never thought about that before. So when you have a walking date and you're asking these deep questions, you give them time to think and you give them the capability of going inside of themselves and digging up those answers and delivering them to you, which is what you want. You want something with more substance right? When it comes to a relationship. So have your first date be of substance and see who rises up to that. Like I'm so excited about this. Now here's another, another thing that's a benefit to having a walking date is sometimes you're not even knowing what to say next. You're not knowing what to ask next. There's a lull in the conversation Stephanie says, I have a date Thursday, so need to know this. Ooh, good thing you're here, Stephanie. Stephanie, my God, I got in. I'm high-fiving your girlfriend. Stephanie's been walking me through some of her dating experiences lately. She has been bringing up the no kissing for three months rule on her past two dates. She's gotten fantastic reception, which is perfect, which is, you know, the guys are saying, hey, that's, that's no problem. I understand. So ladies, do not be afraid to use this. Has so Stephanie, so happy to see you. Um, so now if there's a lot in the conversation and neither of you knows what to say next, wouldn't that be awkward if you're squaring off face to face? It really would. And and who wouldn't squirm inside when something like that happens? So when you are side by side and nobody knows what to say next it's okay. Nobody feels uncomfortable. Nobody feels weird. And when you do the kind of date that Deborah just had, which let me see, what is, what is this? Con fair, concert, sharing fries, <laughs> like fantastic. There's so many things going on around you that when nobody is saying something, there's still things to look at. And something that you see can spark a new conversation. Like if you're at the fair and somebody says, you know, as a child, I was kind of afraid of clowns. Really? Why? I mean, what happened there? What sparked that? I've heard about that, but I've never met anybody who was afraid of clowns before. You never know where the conversation can go. And you are getting to the depths of who they are, which is amazing. So you're going to find out how shallow they are or how deep they are or how thoughtful they are or how fun they are. You might find out how much of a sense of humor they have. You know, if you suggest like, I'd love to meet with you, but I don't want to do the usual coffee thing. That's so passe. I really want to go do something. What do you suggest? Maybe if you toss that ball over at him. And I mean, you can suggest a date too, by the way. Make it a park, fair, concert marina, art gallery. What do you like to do? Do you want to go to the dog park? What do you like to do? Suggest that to them. But you can also say, you know, I'd like to get away from the coffee and the dinner date. What do you think we should do? And see what he says, because that's going to be a nugget of, inf I keep knocking my microphone. That's going to be a nugget of information about who they are, about what interests them, about what kind of person they are. And I'd, I'd love for you to start uncovering that sooner rather than later and start finding compatibilities. That would be so, so great. Now, 
I talked about questions. And I have questions. I didn't list them here. But I have actually 15 questions that I put in my book, No More Assholes, that are designed to dig beyond the surface. And these are questions like, who is your role model? Who was your favorite teacher growing up? If you could do anything and, and not worry about finances, what would you love to do? You know, even ask them, like, what is it that you do for work? And when they tell you, say, do you like your job? It's, it's really funny. Like people, they're so conditioned by other people's expectations. And whenever I meet somebody new, I always ask, what do you do? And then I look at how they answered. And some people say, oh, I'm an accountant. And then I say, do you like your job? And they go, yeah, I really do. Like, I, I love numbers. I always did. I've always been really great at it. And I correct them. I say, you know, the way you answered that was like you didn't. And he goes, yeah, well, you know, because people think it's boring. And I say, yeah, but you love this. You think it's exciting. So when somebody asks you what you do, you should own that. Own your love. Own your passion and say, I'm an accountant. So ask them what they do. And then ask them if they enjoy it. And then ask them what they enjoy about that. Like, get through the layers, let them see that you want to understand more about them than whether or not they're good on paper. Now, obviously, you know, you have deal breakers. Maybe one of the questions that you have on a first date is, do you want more children? And you absolutely don't want to have more children. Then, you know, this is probably not the person that you would go on a second date with because your fundamental values and wants and desires are divergent. They are not the same, but if you have the fundamentals there, then be prepared to go deep and go on that walking date and understand that when it comes to the right kind of man, he really does want to go slow. So I'm keeping this this one short tonight, you guys, and I'm going to be keeping them a little bit shorter going forward because I don't want to overwhelm you with too much information every time we hop on with this. And I know some of you are busy ladies, and so I always like to kind of keep you in before you have to jump off again. So I want to talk about next week, and I'm going to go back in the chat here. I'm going to take a look to see if there's any more questions. Um, so had, Deborah says I had a guy who also... Road motorcycles, asked me to go for a ride, but I reject those because we can't talk riding on two separate... Oh, Deborah has her own bike. Awesome. Um, can't, can't talk while riding on two separate bikes. You know, I was reading that and I was like, oh, like he wants you to ride on the back of his, but that's actually really cool. Um, love that you both ride bikes. That's really awesome. Um, men with kids are afraid of me because I don't have kids. I, I wonder about that. So this is an inter interesting comment here. Men with kids are afraid of me because I don't have kids. I tend to think, and, and this is something that I've seen, and I'm wondering why this you feel this is different if there's something that someone said, but men with children tend to appreciate meeting a woman who doesn't have children because if he's a good man, he's very devoted, and he's very supportive and he ensures that his children have financial security. And so, you know, he works extra long hours to ensure that they have that. Um, and they actually appreciate women who don't have kids because who they take in is who they take care of. And so when they meet a woman with kids, their brain instantly goes, I'm going to have to help her with them too. And not necessarily help her raise them because... You know, people are understanding nowadays that I raise mine and you raise yours and I discipline mine and you discipline yours, but I don't discipline yours and you don't discipline mine. And so they understand that the disciplining, you know, doesn't go both ways. But if somebody has children, then you have to put up with the way that they're brought up. 
And if they've been, you know, helicoptered and, and they're not sustained, you know, they're, they're not kind of going out on their own yet as they get older, that kind of thing that can weigh on a relationship. And they're seeing that happen with people around them, that, that their friends are getting in relationships with other people who have children and then having issues with the way those children are behaving sometimes. And then there's the financial aspect of feeling like they need to financially support not just the woman that they're with. Uh, or share bills with at least, but also her children. And so they see extra responsibility with each additional person. And so they tend to be more open to women. Like they're, they're you know, they're, they're accepting either way. But sometimes I see that they prefer it when women don't have children because it just makes it easier. It's, it's much easier to take in one person than it is to take in three right? And so I am curious about that, Deborah, where that idea comes from. And if somebody said that to you, or if that was your experience, or if, if there was just somebody who said, you know, you don't understand because you don't have kids, which I can, I can fully see that happening. Um, I know I definitely don't understand because I don't have kids. I know my husband has said, you don't understand because you don't have kids. So I do get that. Um, so it is, it, yeah, so Stephanie said, yeah, Stephanie says it is hard to blend, fa blend families. Um, so Deborah, I don't think you not having kids should make it hard. Um, I seen fear, confusion on their face. Like I don't have kids. <laughs> have you ever explained to them? Well, it's okay. I, like, I kind of get that. Because, you know, men, who, like, the, again, the kind of men that I steer you towards are very devoted to their children. And they're the ones who tend to say, I knew I wanted to have children ever since I was a teenager. And, you know, Mother Nature made them very, very good cavemen. We, when we lived in the jungle 200,000 years ago, you know, our first evolution, early Homo sapien, men needed to have a deep sense of devotion to their children and they needed to have a deep desire to have children because she made them to want their DNA to continue. If that wasn't the case, you and I would not be here today. But now we have, you know, guys who are out there who are making children but not caring about supporting them because they didn't care to lean into the woman in the first place. And they tell themselves, well, you know, she got pregnant. It was a mistake. It's her responsibility. I'm not taking that on. Or I'm just going to, I'm going to be a part-time dad. I'm not going to be a fully devoted dad. Uh, I'm not going to work enough to ensure that I can pay my child support. It, there, you know, I'm just, I just want to be lazy. I just want to have this like fun, fun lifestyle. And I don't want to worry about responsibilities. Um, so there is that type of male, but the type of male that I steer you towards, the deeply devoted kind, are the ones who when they were younger, before they had kids, they had this driving desire to have those children. And when those children come into the world, they will say, my life had purpose when I saw that child come into the world. And it is hard for us to understand people who are not like us. And I can understand how they can look at people like us. I don't have kids. So how they can look at people and, and say, you, you don't have that drive, that desire, that need to create another human being. I don't get that. Does that make you less? Like, I just, I can't wrap my head around that because I couldn't imagine not making a child. I couldn't imagine not being a parent, not raising another human being. And, and so I can see how it's hard for them to wrap their heads around it because frankly, from myself sitting on the other side of that equation, deciding to not have children. I look at parents, Stephanie, I know what you're going through. And, and I say, how do you do it? I can't imagine even wanting to take on that level of responsibility, caring for another human being for the rest of your life in some cases. And it's difficult for my brain to wrap itself around the notion that you can create and lean into another human being so intently. Um, Deborah says, I'm extremely adventurous, always going somewhere, doing something with the different people. Think lots don't like that. 
it yeah well i mean it depends right uh you know i th i think maybe who you've met are are people who were somewhat more selfish somewhat more controlling i know my husband like i i go out i go to get togethers i go to events i go to parties uh and and you know, my husband doesn't hold me back in any way. He's never said, I don't like it when you go out. I don't like it when you hang out with your friends. I don't like it when you go party. Uh, because for him, first and foremost, what he wants is my happiness. And he would never, ever want to come between me and my happiness. He supports me, even when it means putting himself aside. He has done that recently. We just filmed a documentary a little while ago. And this is a man who refuses to let me put him on social media. And he sat down for an interview for this documentary and his reasoning was, I have to support my wife. Blew my mind. I actually had a happy cry when I learned about that because, it, you know, it's, it's just another way that he has shown me that my happiness is so important to him and he would never, ever hold me back and he would always do what he can to help me step forward. So Deborah, you're meeting the wrong guys. I want you to start imagining somebody like my husband, because if you could conceive it, you can achieve it. And I want him to step into your life. You fully deserve somebody who's absolutely incredible. You deserve somebody who will take his time to get to know you, who will wait three months minimum for that first kiss for you to get to know them who will fall in love with you during that process, who will want nothing more than to scooch underneath you so he can lift you up. And ladies, do not be afraid of the pedestal because they love lifting you up. It makes them feel like a better man. These are the men who are lifting their children up. They're lifting the mothers of their children up. They're lifting up the people around them who need help. They love being that person. It makes them feel fulfilled. This is the type of person you want to be with so that you can compete in who's going to be more awesome in the relationship. It is unbelievable. It is incredible. I talk about this so much because I want you to know that there are men, men, my husband is not the only one. There are men out there who want nothing more than to do that. And I want you to know that they are out there and they're out there for you. They will support you. They will love you. Let's go back into our slide. So guys, what are we talking about at our next get together? Do you want to talk about how to introduce that no kissing for three months rule? Um, Deborah says, if you reconnect with an ex-boyfriend who wants to try again, do you wait three months again? I would say yes, because here's the thing. They're an ex for a reason. What made them an ex and what has changed since then? How have they changed since then? And they might tell you what's changed and how they've changed, but unless they can show you those are just words. Anybody can say anything. I want to see the action match the words. I want to see the reality match the words. I want to see the behavior match the intent. So he's saying he intends to get back together with you. Let's see if the behavior can be consistent. So put him up at the same level as anybody else who wants to come into your life and ask for the same thing. Show me who you are for three months, show me if you can be consistent and let me take some time to make this decision and not rush into something. Uh, Stephanie, I'm afraid to tell any men the struggles I have. So Stephanie, because I know, you know, like not all of us have an easy time at this point in our lives, right? And I don't suggest laying out all of your struggles right away. Get to know the human being. Let him get to know the human being you are. And then as you get to know each other, then you can start talking about the challenges that you have so that they can say to themselves, okay, I'm really appreciating her heart. 
I'm really appreciating her brain and I am appreciating how she is using both to deal with her challenges and I'm willing to be by her side as she goes through them. So let them see who you are as a human. See if you start appreciating the humanity inside of each other and then you start opening yourself up more and letting them see what is happening inside of your life. But first and foremost, it's about seeing each other as an individual human and then you get into what the periphery is. What is the circumstance around your life? Uh, Stephanie says, no way, but I've got this like 14 second leg and I honestly don't even know what no way is referring to now. Stephanie says, I would run from someone if they told me too much right away. Yeah. Um, you know, some people are there. I don't know, Stephanie, let me, let me give a little caveat about that at this point. Um, I would run for someone if they told me too much right away. Some people like you, it may be a good man who is just tired of wasting time. Like he's tired of spending that time to get to know somebody on a human level, getting feelings for them and then telling them what is going on in their life and then hitting a wall of rejection. And so he is now coming at dating with the idea of, you know what, I'm putting all of this on the table and if you don't like it, then that is your prerogative and that's all there's going to be to it. I'm just not going to waste any more time. I'm putting it all smack dab on the table. Uh, so maybe, you know, kind of take it for that or say, you know, that's a lot to say on a first date. Usually people hold back a little bit. How come you're dishing out so much on a first date? And get the story, right? Like sometimes it's really worth finding out what the story is behind the behavior. So again, peel those layers back. Find out who they are. Find out where they're coming from. Find out what's going on. Ask those questions. Uh, no way. Don't tell them right away. I don't do that. Uh, not over it yet. Um don't do that or not over it yet. So not over the past yet is what you're asking, Stephanie. Oh, if, if they're saying too much on a first date, so maybe it's because they're not. Okay. So listen, if what they're saying is, um, you know, I have three kids, one of them is autistic. Um, I have an ex-wife. We, we kind of get along, um, you know, but sometimes it's a little bit hard because she moved two hours away. And so, you know, like my, my weekends are taken up with my kids. And so they're sort of kind of giving you a picture of what their life is. That's one thing, right? That's, that's just kind of like, look, I want to know before you run, before I get feelings, um, I, just, I just want you to know what's going on in my life because I just, I'm just kind of tired of wasting time and divulging this slowly. So I'm just going to, I'm going to load it up on the table. So there's that. But if he comes at the date and what he's talking too much about is his exes and how they wronged him and what was terrible about their relationships and how he still feels cheated and he still feels burned and he's unloading what I call emotional vomit. So if it's coming from like, if, if the stuff he's talking about has an underlying theme of anger and frustration and not getting what he needs and these people are wrong, I don't like the finger pointers because Really, the best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. And if he's busy telling you how other people are responsible for what went wrong in his life, that is definitely something you run from because, again, you cannot change a man and this is who he is. And if you get in a relationship with him, whatever goes wrong, guess what? You're going to be the next person he talks about who did this wrong and didn't do that and didn't respect this and didn't appreciate that and on and on it goes. Uh, my last date going on and on about his ex cheated, right? No, goodbye. Um, because that is just, that's too much. Um, <clears throat> it is definitely too much. And Oh, I'm not even going to get into that. It's, it's just, no, that's, that's an emotional vomit. Definitely. This is, this is not something that is going to be good for you. 
I would not lean into this one. I would not go on a second date. Uh, they are not over that pain. Oh, Stephanie, that was a five-hour date. I'm feeling for you, girlfriend. That is terrible. Um, okay, guys, let's talk about next week. Uh, let's talk about what you want to talk about next week. I'm thinking a topic would be how to have the no kissing for three months conversation when it's worth having, when it's not worth having, how you introduce that conversation. Um, you know, what, what do you think the challenges are to that? What do you think the responses will be to that? Why do you not want to have that conversation? Let's talk about that. Let's talk about this, this no kissing for three months rule. And, and let's see if, if I can convince you to change your mind, if you've told yourself that you don't want to have this conversation, and, and let's see what you think you're going to face. Let's see what your fears are, because if you've never had this conversation before, this can be a freaky conversation to have, because we've been taught, and, and I know this because when I did my book tour, and I held up No More Assholes, and I said, I'm going to teach you how to do a no kissing for three months rule in this book. Every single woman looked at me in complete shock and said, nobody's going to wait three months for a first kiss. Like exactly that way. Nobody's going to wait three months for a first kiss. That is their belief. And they have this belief based on what they've been told. And what they've been told is you must kiss on a first, second, or third date to see where it goes. They've been told consciously because they've been on a date and they felt a spark and they saw the look in his eye and he leaned in for a kiss. And so they've been led along by his time frame. This is when we kiss. And then you watch a movie and they go on a date. And if that date was good, they have a kiss at the end of the date. Stephanie says, uh, just set it out right, set it out right and said, this is what I do. So how do you feel about that? Yes. Yeah, so Stephanie has brought this up on a few dates now. I'd love to see you say something in the comments about what their reaction was to that. Uh, so, so far we have one vote for talking about the no kissing for three months rule at the next webinar. Ladies, uh, if you've gone away, come back here. And let me know what it is you would like to talk about at the next webinar. Uh, Stephanie says, told both men before the date. Oh, so before you even went on that date. Um, interesting. And they show up, see? Both said no problem, so we can get to know each other. And that's exactly what, you know, like some guys are going to say, you're crazy. There's no way. I can't wait three months for a kiss. Great. Then you know sooner rather than later, this is one of the ones that you move on from. Most of them will say, okay, I respect that. That makes sense. Um, and then you make sure that you use the rule because there are some guys who are just going to try and test you. Uh, so do make sure that you lean in for the whole three months, but I want to teach you good with this or how to set up a good online dating profile. Um, okay, so we did the online dating profile one, Carolyn. So we're going to go on to the next step and do the, the no kissing for three months one then. Um, and I'm going to teach you guys that one. Um, this, the new, this new one said, oh, we can do other things. No, honey. Well, I said, good luck. He said, I'm a good guy. So no problem. Of course, they're going to tell you that. Of course. Okay. So I want you to bring all that in. Um, I'm just kind of realizing, just kind of realizing, I do a monthly No More Assholes webinar, and I actually break down the no kissing for three months rule at that No Assholes webinar. The next one is on October 8th, so I'm going to want to do a different topic than the no kissing rule, and you guys can log in, you can, you can do the one on October 8th to really find out about how to do that no kissing for three months rule. I just don't want to, you know, I don't want to bore you. So I want to hit on new stuff. Um, 
so Stephanie, I said, let's wait and see. Absolutely fantastic. That, I mean, that is such a guy response to say, oh, no kissing, that's okay. We can do other stuff. <laughs> like, what are you talking about, dude? Do you think I'm going to give you a BJ? You think I can go straight there if you don't start here? Like, is that what he meant? I'm wondering. Hopefully he meant other forms of affection. Because that is something that no kissing actually gets you exercising is other forms of affection. Anyways, I'm going to spend some more time thinking about what the next topic is going to be next week. Guys, if you're following me, you're going to see it pop up. I want to bring you something cool, refreshing, interesting. Uh, so keep watching on my Instagram, on my Facebook. I'm going to let you know what that next topic is. In the, in the coming days, I'm going to send it out in an email. Um, now, um, was it Car Caroline? Uh, Caroline, you said that, um, that you'd like to find out how to make a dating profile. I can help you with that if you want some help. And that's something that I do as part of my coaching. And, and I can just like custom make a little package for you. Uh, you know, so do you, do you need help with selecting your pictures? Do you need help with writing your bio? Do you need help with understanding how to respond to people? Um, so contact me. So email me, message me after this, and we'll talk about what it is that you need. And, and I'll put something together for you and we can right away start creating something really awesome, um, for your dating profile so that it starts attracting that man that you're looking for. And I can, I can sort of teach you how to weed through the guys and um, I can teach you how to weed through the guys so that you're not wasting any time so that you're really getting to the great ones sooner rather than later. Um, and if you guys want to kind of really step forward into dating, you want some step-by-step -step help. I would love to do some coaching with you. I have a special offer, which is five sessions for $500. Um, this is actually a really good deal because when you do an individual session with me, it is $125 for an hour. Now a session, you know, I, when, when you click on the add to cart, it's going to say, you know, five hours for $500. I'm going to give you a full hour and a half session for $500, which is an incredible value. And what I do is I help you through step by step. Now, I put a post up today. Everybody loved it. And, and I talked about how, uh, you know, I, I talked about how the things that tend to stop you from getting in the right relationship, either... It's hard for you to find the right person or sometimes you find the right person but you can't stay in that relationship because they're really awesome but you just fight too much. A lot of these issues come from your past, from your upbringing, from your history, from your conditioning, from your experiences and you start vomiting negative emotions forward and you're pushing the wrong people or the right people. You're pushing the right people away and like attracts like, and if there's a lot of inner turmoil going on, then you're actually attracted to people who feel the same as you do. And so if there's too much anger, too much frustration, uh, you know, too many walls, too many emotional walls, if you don't know how to have the right relationship because you were never modeled that when you were growing up, all of this can get in your way. And I want to help you through that so that you can step into this right relationship with the kind of vibe, the kind of energy, the kind of emotional leadership that you need to really make it work. And it's incredible. When you start doing the stuff that I do, there's shifts that happen. Like, you know, we, we talk about the universe. We talk about alignment. The stuff that I, I work with you on, it is very scientific. It's very therapeutic. Guys, let me tell you, I have people who come to me after years in therapy and they advance quickly just within a few weeks because I'm not just sitting there letting them talk. I listen to what they're saying. I find the source of the pain. 
I give them perspective so that they understand it. <clears throat> and with understanding comes compassion, which means they start feeling better. And then I give them tools to move forward. Because once you understand how to change things inside of your brain that are creating hiccups, that are getting in your way, that are creating negative emotions, once you start understanding where they come from and how to change them, now you create something that ripples out from yourself. And this is where alignment comes in because you always have alignment. But if you are in a negative space, your alignment is negative and you're meeting negative people. When you start shifting inside yourself into a more positive place, now what is being aligned with you is more positive experiences. And there's some synchronicity that starts happening. And I want to get you on this path. I want to get you started on this which is why I give you this, this special so that you can step into it and I give you a payment plan to make it easy because, I mean, that's kind of my motto. Like I, I keep saying I make it easy just because I do. Like that is what my people tell me is they cannot believe the change that they experience. They can't believe how quickly it happens. They can't believe how fast they shift in one phone call in one session and I do my sessions over the phone we can do face to face if you're local if you want I have an office but I have a lot of people who come to me from all over the world and and so I conduct a lot of my sessions over the phone it doesn't make a difference it's super easy you can be in your jammas your kids can go out the door and then you get on a call with me we have a session you take your notes you get your homework and and then voila you can get right into your work so I do make it super easy. And if coaching isn't for you, then guys, my books are still on sale. I, I, I mean, it's unbelievable. I don't know how long the sale is lasting for. I am not controlling this sale. It is Amazon. It is Indigo that have put these books on sale. And these are a steep discount. Like in some cases, this is like when I do... Uh, events like if I do a um, uh, a trade show then I'll have my books on special and I'll do one for 20 two for 30 and in some cases these books are cheaper than the special that I have when I show up in public so if you're an Amazon shopper if you're an indigo shopper there's different books depending on what platform um, so check out where you shop check out what book you're looking for and pick up the one that you've been kind of eyeballing, but you're a paperback reader and you haven't quite picked it up yet. Now is the time. And there's so many ways that you can plug into me. I have these weekly webinars, Tuesdays at 8 p.m. Once a month, it's the No More Assholes webinar. And that's where I really get into teaching the No Kissing for Three Months rule. Because this is a rule that liberates not only women, but it gets the men who are looking for somebody to lean into and be devoted to and lift up an opportunity to find that woman and lift her up. Going back in the chat, I just want to see really quick. Um, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Stephanie. Yeah, the no kissing for three months rule, it shuts down the guys very quickly. The selfish short-term thinkers, it gets them out of the equation so freaking fast. This is such a great vetting process. Uh, I do a weekly podcast. Every Monday, I release a new topic. Last two weeks, I talked about cheating. So first, I laid out the four different types of cheaters. And this week, I talked about if you find out you're with one of these kinds of cheaters, what do you do? Uh, how do you deal with it? I wish I could say it is black and white, but guys, it is not that easy. There are three types that you should leave right away, absolutely, that you should let go of. But there is one type that does deserve to have you stay and work through it if they are willing to work through it. So if this has been your experience, if you have... If, if you're thinking this might be your experience, 
you know, there's, I've, I've got some red flags in there, things that you should watch out for so that it's not your experience. So go to iTunes, uh, go to podbean.com if you don't have a podcast player or a favorite podcast player, or just type in Google Chantal Hyde Podcast because there are so many other podcast stations that have picked up my channel and is broadcasting it. So just pick one and go back into my podcast. I've got like 51 at this point that are super interesting, super cool. Um, a really popular one lately is a conversation that I had with a bodybuilder about the no kissing for three months rule. So I bring in guests, I sit with guests, you know, and I put that all up for you so that you can listen in on these conversations and learn, 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 because I want you to be smart daters because smart daters get into fantastic relationships. And that is definitely what I want from you. What I want, well, what I want from you, because I want to feed off your karma, ladies. And this is what I want for you because you deserve nothing but the best. Um, so if there are not any more questions, I'm going to sign off for tonight. As always, you guys, you know, I love you. I love seeing you here. I love you leaning in. I love these conversations that we have. Um, if you have, uh, you know, maybe some, some idea for next week, again, I'm going to put my mind to it and come up with something fresh and cool. I kind of distracted myself because I thought I'd do the no kissing rule, but then I realized I'm going to do it on October 8th anyways. So I don't want to be redundant, but I will be sending out an email shortly with the topic uh, for the next week. And Deborah says, good night, beautiful. Stephanie, thank you. Good night, Stephanie. And I love you guys. Love you guys. And I will see you very soon. See you on Instagram. See you on Facebook. See you on the webinar. Make sure you have a great night, okay? Good night, you guys.